Hey everybody, Jack Carr checking in and it's already time for the February video update to include the February reading list. We'll get to that in a moment. I want to start out with some reviews, some negative reviews. So these ones all come from Amazon and uh, there's really, there's some gems in here. So I'll go through a couple of these and uh, remember if you want to counter any of this, head over to Amazon and, uh, and leave a review. It helps and that goes for any of your favorite authors. So, oh, before I do that, yeah, this is the new office, temporary office, but uh, yeah, it's getting there. Not quite there yet, a few other things coming, so it's uh, uh, in transition. It's uh, about to have the books going on the shelves over there, and yeah, this will be it for a little while, so almost there. So here we go. One star, right-wing propaganda. Every Democrat in this book is a villain. We just spent four years listening to the big lie, and I don't need more of it in my recreational fiction. Here's another one, not a verified purchase. Political fantasy propaganda. Again with the propaganda, interesting. Here we go, ridiculously biased narrative designed to denigrate liberals. It's sad and ironic that people like this author, Jack Carr, attempt to paint themselves as patriotic while framing progressives as bad. What we see in reality is exactly the opposite. Their writing directly contributes to the far greater threat of right-wing violence, like we saw on January 6th, 2021. All right, here we go. Skippable, one star. I'm very suspicious of all the glowing five-star reviews. I heard Carr on Joe Rogan. He sounded interesting, so I gave the book a shot. What really ruined it for me is just how poorly written it is. Very repetitive. You never know when you're going to turn the page and get stuck in a tedious flashback sequence or a meticulously detailed gun description. Right, I'll take that. The, prop, the protagonist encounters absolutely no resistance whatsoever as he cuts through his enemies. He also has an unlimited supply of cash and assistance from allies. Helps to have friends. The headache tumor thing seemed to be a big deal in the beginning. It comes back into play toward the end. What happened to the repetitive thing? Anyway, that's okay. Carr certainly seems to have credibility. I just think he could use some help in putting a book together. If someone gave me the other books in the series for free, I'd check them out. <laughs> awesome. Uh, here we go. Bam. Should be labeled a horror book rather than a thriller. The one star is only given because the author clearly showed expertise in weapons and tactical moves and describing such. The number of murders and the detailed how-to for each was just too much. I skimmed over some sections to reduce the amount of gore. Yeah, I'll take that one too. Here we go, another one star. Carr is no Clancy. Clancy misspelled. Spare us the political sermonizing, though. If I once thought pilot egos were immense, I now know SEALs think even more highly of themselves. Uh, here we go. All right, here's another one. Meh. But three stars. Interesting. Kind of annoying that the location in the second part of the book is all redacted. That was annoying to me as well because I made it up, uh, but I won it on appeal. So uh, it's, it's in Morocco. But uh, anyway, yeah, all the 50, 37 of the 54 redactions I won on appeal by showing the government that they came from actual government websites, publicly available government documents. So um, I showed them where all of them came from, but I only won on 37 of them. So uh, the answer is in Morocco. All right, here we go. Uh, this guy, he says he tried. This is the third book I've read in the series. I'm sorry, but I couldn't get past 13%. It reminded me of how much I struggled with the other two. Uh, yeah, don't get the fourth one. The Devil's Hand coming out April 13th. You're not going to like it. Uh, I don't want to leave a review, but then there are a zillion four-plus star reviews. What are you supposed to do? Here are my issues. First, the writing and dialogue are pretty simplistic. Second, I know you were a SEAL. Thanks for your service. But there's more time spent describing gear than I really need to know. Thirdly, I'm sure the author has had all the top secret security clearances known to man. I get it. Plus, I understand that the book has to be reviewed for sensitive information. So either just name another city or a fake name or whatever. I did. <laughs> and the fake names and fake things still got redacted. Yep. Redacting text does nothing for me. Sorry. 
Uh, to me, it's more of a statement of, I know more than you do. Not really. Uh, good, I hope you do. I wish this author well. I'm a huge fan of espionage reading, but this just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, well, that's just gonna uh, happen. All right, there we go. And this, uh, well, there's one more, <laughs> there's two more actually, but uh, this one really long one is a little out there. And I was gonna read the whole thing, but uh, I think go to Amazon and if you scroll down a little bit for uh, Savage Sun reviews, it's the one about Montana. So this person did not like that I mentioned Montana in that third novel. So, uh, but it's pretty long and it's a little bit out there. So check it out though. <laughs> Highly recommended. Uh, one star. Yep. Uh, and the last one, this is classic. There is entertainment value in this novel, but the scenarios get more implausible as the book continues. Extremely violent. Can't imagine in real life a group of former soldiers taking up arms to violate the law. Unless, of course, you're talking about George Washington, founder of our country, and the war for independence. But anyway, it's too easy. All right, anyway, let's move on here. What should we do next? I think some gear. Bam. Montana Knife Company. This thing is called the Speed Goat. And uh, these guys seem awesome. Looking forward to getting up there to visit. Oh, <laughs> in Montana. Sorry, my data reviewer guy, I'm coming back. But uh, this thing's really sweet. Um, and we're doing a podcast tomorrow. So by the time this video is up, maybe that podcast will be up to you with Montana Knife Company. So uh, cool group of people up there, super cool, made in the USA. And uh, yeah, very cool. Check out that podcast, I will be posting about it. What else do we have here? <laughs> this thing is legit, hardcore hammers. So uh, if you've read the novels or followed me for a bit, you know, I might have a thing for axes, tomahawks, that sort of thing. So this one these guys made for me, look at that. I don't know if you can see from up there, but it says strength and honor. And then here, I have a little thing, a little tagline thing, kind of the way I live my life. Never tell me the odds. Uh, and really it's never pay attention to the odds. It's like, hey, uh, but that doesn't fit very well on things. So I never pay attention to the odds. Just means, hey, you know, the odds might be very slim, just like making it through buds, becoming a seal, whatever, um, anything you want to do in life that's difficult, which is most things in life worth doing. So um, I say never pay attention to the odds. Uh, just get that piece of data, file it away, and then uh, go get after it and apply your bandwidth towards doing the things that are gonna get you where you wanna go. So that's that. So thank you guys, this thing's awesome. Really appreciate that. This is pretty sweet. So uh, Dustin, he's um, uh, Ruin or Despair on Instagram. He sent me this thing, so this is a, like a World War, uh, World War I uh, knuckles that these have on uh, trench knives. There, he's called it Doughboy, but uh, I think you can get them on, or it might be all sold out, but I think they were on um, uh, Monkey's Edge. But uh, Andrew, uh, man, awesome. And all the links for this stuff will be in the copy under this video. So, uh, so sweet. Thank you. Awesome. Really appreciate that. Uh, oh, this is, <laughs> look at this. Awesome. So, these are from the guys at Colorblind Designs. Look at that. They put my name on that. Look at that. Ammo can. Awesome. And this is a drink carrier for your sodas. So anyway, this thing is awesome. Has a little bottle opener right there attached to it. And uh, you know, they put that on there, uh, my last rank in the military. And uh, yeah, super cool. So thank you guys, love this thing. Super creative. I love when you guys uh, do things like this. Just awesome. So very cool. Colorblind designs, boom. What else? Oh, this is sweet, okay. Uh, Flux Defense this is the Raider, and this thing right here, um, I'd seen this stuff around before, and so I asked a buddy of mine that trained some of our top tier special operations units, hey, when would I want to use something like this? Because I'm always curious, always learning, always asking questions, and, uh, and he gave me a few good reasons, and I'm going to hold off on talking about them here, but uh, look at this thing, you drop, in this case, you drop a SIG 320 um, series into this, and... Boom, bam. So you put the uh, got a light here, you put a red dot optic right here, you have an extra mag right there. And these guys, look at that, they put the cross tomahawks on there. So awesome. So I'm gonna get this thing all set up. I'm gonna go do a, uh, you know, a day of training with it and I'll write about it. And then uh, see uh, when you might wanna be carrying something like this, when it would be appropriate. And there are a few times when something like this could come in handy. So very cool. So. Thank you guys, Flux Defense. This is awesome. I really appreciate you guys sending this out. Looking forward to training with it. Awesome. All right, what else do we have? Lots of gear. 
gear has been piling up. Well, let's do this one. Aries Watch Company. So I did the giveaway uh, in January. I'm trying to do one giveaway uh, a month, but you know, whenever it happens to make sense, you can try to do some giveaways just to say thank you so much for all your support to everybody who has uh, taken a risk on me as a new author, read the novel, listened to it, and then told a friend because uh, it just means so much to me. So uh, some of the gear that I talk about in the novels or that I, uh, that I use in real life or whatever, um, be giving some of that away. So the first one was an Aries watch. So uh, awesome, so I signed this. It's this one right here, if you can see it, the diver one. Love this watch, been wearing it for over a year now. It's awesome, so uh, it is in here, along with extra bands, and it's going to Cody Tester. So Cody, you won, I have your address, this is heading your way, and I'm signing this, it fits right in the box, and this will be coming to you too. So uh, paperback, Savage Sun, has the first two chapters of The Devil's Hand. So you can get a head start. So awesome, this will be heading out this week. Very cool. And speaking of giveaways, there's another giveaway for February. So go to Monday's post and Monday through Friday. So Friday, I think is February 19th. Just leave a comment on the post for uh, in the comment section and follow me, follow Everly Stock Packs and uh, be signed up for my newsletter. And you too can win two packs, Everly Stock Packs, which are awesome. I've been using them for over a decade now. I got my first one from Clinton Heidi Smith at Thunder Ranch years ago when I was still a sniper in the SEAL teams. And one of those packs might be what Chris Pratt is using in possibly the opening scene to the terminal list. So we'll see, we'll see. You never know how stuff's gonna come out from the edits anyway, but uh, right now anyway, it's a strong possibility. So we'll see. Okay, what else do we have here? This is cool, African Sporting Creations. I don't know if you can see it from there. Tomahawks. So what is this, you may ask? This is a very important piece of kit to me anyway. So you open it up and what does it have? Whiskey glasses and your whiskey right there. So that's legit. So uh, is this something, this may be something that uh, you'll be able to get with Cross Tomahawks on the merch site soon when that comes back up. So we'll see. So stay tuned for that. Speaking of the merch site that is going down, by the time this goes up, it probably will be down. And we're just gonna increase some efficiencies and uh, make sure we can meet demand and have some cool stuff coming your way this year. So uh, that is in the works. So no arm, I think I'm saying this right. Kandahar combat uniform. I got this, I tried this thing on. It's awesome, I haven't really used it yet, but it's the, the hooded, um, what is this thing? The hooded, what's well, the hooded shirt, the hooded combat uniform. And it's pretty sweet. So they make them in uh, Norway, I think. And uh, yeah, really cool company. Love when guys get out there and doing something that's uh, a little bit unique, different, and this thing is pretty sweet. So looking forward to giving that a giving that a run. All right, what else? I think that's most everything. Oh, this is pretty sweet too. So most of you guys, well, you know that I am the Quest Solomon boot guy. They're a little muddy, but uh, so I've been wearing these for years. Absolutely love them. And I just got these. So from Solomon. So these things, this is, uh, you can still get them in the US though, not for much longer. They're just gonna be available in Europe for a while, but they'll be XL. And so these things were designed to be super lightweight, but to also, you can fit them with crampons. So usually you can't do that on such a lightweight um, boot, but uh, these things were legit, made for uh, guides in the Alps and uh, European special operations units have been using them as well. So these things are super cool. If you want a pair, then uh, find them in the US. Uh, for the next, I don't know, maybe this year, but then after that, they won't be around much longer, only available in Europe. So I'm gonna get these guys around soon. Very cool. What else? Uh, so the reading list this month. So, damn, I am, I'm not gonna run through all of these because I think the video would be too long, but some of these I've talked about before and some of them I'm talking about for the first time. And usually I just do six different books for each month, but uh, this time I'm, I'm have a few more than six, as you can tell, but they all have something to do either directly or indirectly with uh, censorship, with the First Amendment, with book banning, that sort of thing. So uh, I highly recommend all of these, and I'll hit a couple of them. A couple that I've done before I've talked about, you've heard me talk about Atlas Shrugged, Ayn Rand before, you've heard me talk about Term Limits. Why would that one be on this one? Right. Uh, and you've heard me talk about Three Felonies a Day. Um, three Felonies a Day, definitely read this one. Um, and I talked about it before, but hey, the average person gets up, goes to work, 
comes home, has dinner, goes to bed, and in the course of that day has committed three felonies unbeknownst to them because of how many laws are on the books and the way those laws are written. So highly recommend three felonies a day, uh, Harvey Silverblade, amazing book. But uh, here we go, we've got Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence. Now I know these are available online, obviously, everywhere, but having them in bound copies, bound leather copies, uh, I think shows your kids just how important these documents are. So they're probably not gonna study them in school, and if they do, they're not gonna analyze them in a way that uh, you probably approve of as a parent if you're watching this. So uh, that falls on us then as parents to teach our children the importance of these documents and why so many generations of people stood up and fought and died uh, to defend the spirit of these documents. So uh, get these, keep them on the shelf, keep them in a place of honor. All right, what else do we have here? I've got a bunch of other scenes on here. I won't go into each of them, but Brave New World, uh, Welcome to the Monkey House. This is a great one. Uh, Universal History of the Destruction of Books. Hmm, why would I be highlighting this this month in 2021? We'll check it out. George Orwell, 1984. I think it really, actually, if you go to my the, the blog where you can read more about all of these things, link in bio. Uh, this is the only one that I didn't really put commentary under. I just took specific quotes from and listed out some of my specific, my uh, favorite and most, uh, I don't know, I guess some of the more insightful quotes that pertain to February 2021. There we are. Hitler's Willing Executioners. Don't let this be the only book on the subject uh, that you read, but uh, definitely read it. Fahrenheit 451, once again, self-explanatory. Naming names, go to the blog. Art of War, uh-huh. And there's so many different translations of this, interpretations of this. Um, so uh, I have a bunch of them on the shelf, actually, uh, and this one is very, very readable, Canterbury Classics, and, uh, and looks nice on the shelf, but I recommend getting a bunch of uh, translations and interpretations of The Art of War, so that's that. All right, is that everything? Bam, we did it, okay. I think that's everything that uh, I was gonna talk about for February. So uh, once again, uh, Everly Stock, Monday's post, go to that, make a comment, follow me on Instagram, sign up for my newsletter, and there's a couple packs. There's uh, t-shirts, hats, stickers, uh, water bottle, that sort of thing as part of this, this prize pack. Uh, I get questions about the merch all the time. Uh, it's coming back soon, and it'll come back stronger than ever, and uh, that'll be in about a month or, or two, depending on when we figure all that stuff, that stuff out. So anyway, that is it for today. So hey, thank you so much. Sincerely appreciate all your support. Uh, stay positive out there, stay strong, and uh, keep fighting.